Today our sanctuary is empty. Normally, on Easter Sunday, this space would be filled. It would be hard to find a place to sit. The choir loft would be occupied by maybe 80 or 90 voices ready to sing the Hallelujah Chorus. We'd be ringing bells. Christ the Lord is risen today would echo from these pipes of our organ. But today it's silent and it's dark. And honestly, when I came in here this morning, it made me sad. It actually made me cry. But still we gather. We gather to celebrate hope. And one of the signs of that hope is this candle that we light during the Easter season. We call it the Paschal Candle. And this candle reminds us of the good news that came to us from Mary Magdalene on that first Easter Sunday morning. I have seen the Lord. Now this came as a surprise to everyone who heard it. We call this the Paschal Candle because it's derived from the Hebrew word for Passover. We talk about how Christ is passed over from death to life. But even more so today, we're reminded of the bigger story of Passover. How God spared the people of Israel from a plague. And how God led them to freedom as a pillar of fire by night. And as a cloud during the day. Though we gather here with some fear, with some sense of isolation, we also gather in hope. The hope of a glorious resurrection that cannot be denied. Not on this day, nor indeed on any day. Hallelujah and amen.
is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me, whom the Son sets free. Oh, it's Christ is risen. Wait. I'm not sure if I heard you or not. So let's try it again. This time when I say Christ is risen, you know how to respond. He is risen indeed, right? So Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. It's good to have you with us. I heard you that time. It's good to have you with us. My name is Joe Monahan, and uh, I'm the senior pastor here at Medford United Methodist Church. And on behalf of myself, our associate pastor, Kathleen Stoles, the congregation, the staff, everybody here, we want to say thank you for joining us on this very unique uh, Easter Sunday morning. Uh, we never would have imagined to be celebrating Easter in quite this way, but um, it's great to be able to be here with you and to be able to gather together. Throughout this week, this Holy Week, um, it's just meant so much to me to be able to connect with so many of you in so many different ways, especially through the, um, the pastoral check-ins, you know, phone calls and texts uh, and emails and, uh, you know, especially that Holy Thursday uh, communion service that we celebrated. That was incredibly meaningful to me, and I hope it was to you, too. Uh, there were a lot of people who came and, and got on that call with us. It was wonderful, and um, I'm just, I, it meant a lot to me to see your faces. So thank you for that. Thank you for joining us. Um, again, I'll remind you that if you need prayer, if you are find yourself struggling, somebody in your family is struggling, please reach out. Um, we'd love to be able to talk with you and connect with you. Uh, my email is very easy, uh, joe at medfordumc.org. Kathleen's kathleen at medfordumc.org. Uh, you can reach out by phone, call the church. Um, you can reach out through our website. We have a prayer request form there. Um, you, the app also has the link to the prayer request form. There are lots of ways uh, that you can get in touch and let us know what's going on with you. And those connections are super important right now, so I want you to take advantage of them. This week, actually, we've added something new to help with that and help us to stay connected. And so we have now an online uh, attendance form so that when we're having these services online, you can go to this website and just let us know that you were there. And especially if you're new, um, that would be an amazing and wonderful thing if you'd be willing to share with us your contact information. We'd love to let you know about things that are going on here at the church. So I would love to have that privilege and opportunity to connect with you in that way. And you can find that form on our website. It's medfordumc.org. Uh, slash online dash attendance. And that's uh, going to be the form that you're looking for. And uh, just if 
few simple questions. And there's also places there where you can let us know uh, what's going on with you. If you need prayer, uh, you can do that as well. I also want to remind you, this is a great time to download the app. We've had about 360 downloads, I think, at this point, And it's um, an excellent way to stay connected, to find uh, daily inspiration through our devotional, to catch up on sermons. Um, and it's very easy to download. You text Medford app, all one word, Medford app to 77977. Now, it's time to actually begin worship, right? And uh, my favorite Easter hymn, one of my favorite traditions of Easter, is to sing Christ the Lord is Risen Today. And uh, so you'll have to excuse us. A couple times we've gone back into some archive footage and found some, um, some great performances and great celebrations of years past. Um, and in this particular one, I want to apologize in advance because I recognize that I am singing very loudly in the video. But it is one of my favorite traditions of Easter. This is one of my absolute favorite hymns written by one of my absolute favorite hymn writers, Charles Wesley. So what can I say? Sue me. All right. It's Easter. You're going to have to deal with it. So let's sing together. Christ the Lord is risen today. Good morning, everyone. 
and happy Easter to you. It's so, ha um, so good to have you with us for this special children's time. We're social distancing, and so this is a Zoom children's message coming to you. And we're happy to uh, share it with our friends out there in your homes, wherever you are. So not only is the church empty today because of our quarantine time, but we also are celebrating that the tomb was empty. Jesus was no longer in the tomb. So why do you think, Tim, that the tomb was empty? I think the tomb was empty because um, Jesus has risen from the dead. That's right. Jesus rose from the dead, just like he had told his disciples. And yet, when he appeared to his disciples, the Gospels tell us that he didn't recognize them. All four Gospels say Jesus appeared to the disciples, and they didn't know who he was. So, why do you think that they didn't recognize him? They didn't recognize him because... Um, he wasn't Jesus anymore. He was Jesus the Christ. And if some people thought he was a gardener or a soldier, and they started to recognize him because of his actions and what he said to them, what he did to them, and then they started to figure out that it was Jesus. JP, do you have any idea what kinds of things Jesus did that helped him to them to know who he was? Um. What kind his of actions, actions um, what kind of the action? way he looked. What kind of actions would he do? Would he... Um, like, him? how he served breakfast, how he, like, how he, like, did other stuff. How he did stuff. My favorite story about Jesus appearing to the disciples is from the Gospel of John, when he appeared to Mary Magdalene, who he knew very well, and she knew him very well but she didn't recognize him. And she said, if you've taken him away, tell me, where is he? And all of a sudden he said to her, Mary. And she said, oh, Rabboni, teacher. And she recognized him. It was how he said her name. And the fact that she thought he was a stranger, but he knew her name. Would you be surprised, Tim, if somebody came to you and called you by name and you didn't know who it was? That would be surprising, wouldn't it? Yeah, look at JP, thinks that would be really surprising if somebody knew he was JP. Fiona, what if they knew your name without ever telling you, without you ever telling them what your name was? That would be surprising. But you're right, they knew who Jesus was because of the things that he did. So, we can still recognize people who are like Christ in our midst by what they do. Who are some of the people, JP, that do things today that are like Jesus would have done, that are like Christ? Um, garbage workers, um, police, firemen, um, nurses, doctors. Oh, you've named a whole bunch of them. There's a also, um, Medics, also, well, and like priests mm -hmm. and people that work in like churches, even janitors. That's right, even janitors. What about people that are in your house with you today? Are there any um, people that are dad, with Christ there? My baby sister. Yeah, Tim's got shaking his head. Fiona? What do you think? Anybody at your house that's like Christ? Yes. My parents. Uh, okay. Uh, and there's also um, teachers. Teachers? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we don't have any photographs of what Jesus looked like before he died, and we don't have any photographs of what Jesus the Christ looked like after he rose from the dead. So we've seen some pictures that people draw about what they think he might have looked like. So, Tim, what do you think Jesus looked like? Honestly, I think they got it right. Mine's the beard. I think he looked like he had like tanner skin, 
bright blue eyes, um, with brown hair, wh wears like a white robe most of the time, with that red thing, like the red sling. Red or, sash down the front, right? Yeah, and the sandals. Yeah, I think they got it all right. Mine is another style. I think he had a different hairstyle, honestly. Fiona, what do you think Jesus looked like? Uh, I, I, I'm mostly with Timmy, like the white robe and the sandals and the tan skin, because you want to respect both white and African American. They, it, he was like God, and I think he had brown eyes. I think he would have hair that reached down to about mine, and um, yeah, I think that's. It, I'm with Timmy about the beard too. What about you, JP? What do you think you looked like? Um, brown, like tannish, dark tan skin, um, blue eyes, like dark blue eyes, um, a white robe. Um, uh, I wouldn't say there would be a red sash. Um, oh. beige sandals, um, Blonde, dark blonde hair, and that's no beard. No beard. Okay. Um, well, I want to invite you, my friends, and all of our friends that are listening, to draw a picture of what Jesus looked like. Maybe you want to draw a picture of what Jesus the Christ looks like, one or the other, or both. And then maybe your parents could take a picture of it and email it to us. So I'd love for you guys to do it, the three of you, and uh, maybe anyone else who is listening, and you can email it to me. I would love to have that. And then maybe we'll show them all next week as another part of our children's moment. So let's take a moment now and um, go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for your son, Jesus. Thank you for loving us so much that you've promised us eternal life, just like Jesus has. And thank you so much for the lessons that Jesus taught us so that we all may become more like him. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Happy Easter, everyone, and thanks for being with me this morning. I look forward to seeing you again soon in person. Happy Easter. Bye-bye. Bye. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Good morning. Our reading this morning is from John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early in the morning of the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. She ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. Peter and the other disciple left to go to the tomb. They were running together, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and was the first to arrive at the tomb. Bending down to take a look, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he didn't go in. Following him, Simon Peter entered the tomb and saw the linen cloths lying there. He also saw the face cloth that had been on Jesus's head. It wasn't with the other clothes, but was folded in its own place. Then the other disciple, the one who arrived at the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They didn't yet understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to the place where they were staying. Mary stood outside near the tomb crying. As she cried, she bent down to look into the tomb. She saw two angels dressed in white seated where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and one at the foot. The angels asked her, Woman, why are you crying? She replied, They have taken away my Lord, 
and I don't know where they've put him. As soon as she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she replied, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, don't hold on to me, for I haven't yet gone up to my father. Go to my brothers and sisters and tell them, I'm going up to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene left and announced to the disciples, I've seen the Lord. Then she told them what he had said to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we consider once more this good news of Christ's resurrection, let's pray together. Most gracious God, we thank you for the good news of Easter. We thank you for the empty tomb. We thank you for the faithful witnesses who shared the story even though they were afraid. We thank you that this story has been given to us to remind us of the hope that we have in your son Jesus. We thank you for all that you've done and all that you will do in us through him. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I began the service by saying this, Easter is unlike any we've ever seen, and that's most certainly true. But it's not true to say that it's unlike any Easter that the world has ever seen. Easter 2020, I think, has a lot in common with the first Easter. If you read a little past the story that Cindy shared with us earlier, what you find is that the disciples were basically shut up at a house together. I mean, that's how things looked on the first Easter with everyone who knew Jesus shut up in a house together. Having seen what happened to him, they were afraid that the authorities were coming for them next. You know, when we first started all this with the social distancing, I wasn't too rattled by it. I mean, okay, you stay away from people. I hate it. It's isolating, don't get me wrong, but it's manageable. You go out the absolute minimum it takes to keep your life moving forward. Now, I realize not everyone has that luxury. There are lots of people, especially healthcare and retail and food service and public safety workers who are still out there doing their jobs, interacting with all kinds of people all of the time. But now when I go out in public and I see everyone in masks and in gloves, I have to confess it's a little unsettling. It feels a lot different to me now than it did even a week ago. Actually, I even noticed it in the gospel text that this year it, it just leaped off the page to me when it said that there was this face cloth in the tomb that Jesus left behind. I think we all need to be honest about how we're feeling right now. Easter is about hope, and there's plenty of hope. I believe that. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be talking to you. I wouldn't be sharing this. But I think hope can only come when we start by being honest about how we're really feeling, you have to acknowledge the difficult things to admit the struggles and admit your fears before you can really get to that place where things begin to turn, where they begin to shift. There's a famous verse in Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, that says this, that trouble produces endurance, that endurance produces character, that character produces hope, and that hope does not disappoint us. In other words, we're shaped by what we've been through. When we've seen God deliver us in the past, when we've endured, then it becomes part of us to trust God to deliver us through whatever it is that we're dealing with right now. But in between, there comes this moment where we have to be willing to be really, really honest. Now, I wonder if that's actually part of the reason for the three-day wait why did it take three days for Jesus to rise from the dead? Well, it's designed to help us hit the wall. It's designed to stop us from trusting in ourselves. In today's scripture, Jesus' friend Mary is at his tomb. 
She shows up early in the morning. She shows up before it's light and she finds herself weeping in the dark. You know, yesterday morning, I did exactly the same thing. I came into a dark sanctuary and I just wept. I didn't mean to. It's just what happened. I was missing my people because it's been too long since I've seen you. And a scripture verse popped into my head from the book of Joel. The scripture verse says, let the priests of the Lord weep before the altar. So I came and I gave my offering of tears because I miss the joy and the celebration of this Easter day spent with our people, with my people. I feel like we've been robbed, you know? And I'm sure that Mary felt that same kind of emotion that she was robbed. She traveled with Jesus for a long time and Jesus was like her brother. I'm sure that he was the brightest light that she'd ever seen, that he was the brightest light actually that anyone had ever seen. And now that light had been snuffed out. And it gets even worse. Because to her mind, they couldn't even leave her him alone in death. So she's worried that someone has robbed his grave. So now on some level, the question that the angels ask, the question that Jesus asks, why are you crying? Well, the question seems kind of dumb. There are a ton of reasons to be crying. Where do you start? God knows if someone asks us today, hey, is everything okay? The reality for us is no, it's not okay. It's just not. And we've got to acknowledge that we feel that, that that's just where we are. We can't find hope unless and until we know we need it. And you can't need hope unless you can acknowledge that things feel a little hopeless. You need the three days after the cross. You need the 30 days in the quarantine because, because no one needs hope who thinks that they've got everything under control. And that's why for most of us, in most years, Easter is kind of like, okay, it's a good excuse to eat ham. I like ham. It's a good excuse to eat chocolate. I like chocolate. I like jelly beans. I like all of it. But this year, it's objectively different. We're up against something so much bigger than us. A global pandemic that's throwing millions of people out of work, that's costing thousands of lives, that's making us fear for the people that we love. It's so much bigger than us. So where do we find the hope then? Well, remember the formula. Trouble produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. Now, a lot of us will try to get there by relying on our own endurance and relying on our own character. Now, it should be obvious that there are limits to that approach when you're up against something that's so much bigger than you. You do not have enough endurance. You do not have enough strength of character. And that's why we need Easter. Because Easter offers us a shortcut to hope through the character of God. And Easter has everything to do with the character of God. When we talk about resurrection, what Easter shows us is that that's who God is. That's what God does. God brings life where we do not expect it. The tomb is empty. What that says to me is that even death must bow to God. So there's this hope where we didn't anticipate it. Easter says that no situation is beyond God's ability to redeem. That's the character of God as we see it in Jesus Christ. Now, here's the beauty of it all. There's one more dimension of God's character that's revealed on that first Easter Sunday morning. It's not just that God's character is resurrection, it's great, as great as that is. It's not just that God's character is life, as great as that is. It's not just that this character leads to hope, as great as that is. What we learn from Easter is that it's also in God's character to show up and deliver this news to us personally. Jesus shows up himself when we find ourselves out of endurance, at the limits of our own character and totally out of hope. Jesus shows up when we are weeping in the dark. It's not enough that the tomb is empty. Jesus himself greets Mary. He doesn't just rise from the dead and disappear. He shows up. 
That's the message that she brings back to the other disciples. She says, I've seen the Lord. So let me ask you this question. Where have you seen the Lord in this mess? Have you seen Jesus in the face of a neighbor who offered to go to the store for you? Maybe in someone who called or texted to check in on you. Maybe when you were FaceTiming with your kids or with your grandkids. Where have you seen the Lord? Easter, resurrection, life, it's the character of God. It's also the character of God to show up when we most need that hope. When we're weeping in the dark, may God bring you that hope this Easter. And may you go forth into the world to share it with others, even if you have to do it through a mask. Share that hope with others. Remember that he is risen, that he is risen indeed. So let's pray together. God, we thank you for the great gift of hope that you give us through your son, Jesus. We thank you that it, it is in your character, it is in your nature to love us no matter what. That you have loved us by giving us life and new life. That you have shown up in the places where we were hurting the most in order to proclaim that there is a resurrection. We thank you for all of it. And we pray that we might be your witnesses of this hope as we go out into the world. We pray all these things through your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Friends, in just a minute, we're going to move into our prayer time. And as we prepare for that with a song from uh, last Easter that's sung by our junior choir, I invite you to support our ministry with a financial gift. You can make an offering online at medfordumc.org slash give. You can text Medford Give to 77977. You can give through our app, or you can mail a check to us at 2 Hartford Road in Medford, New Jersey, 08055. We thank you for your generosity as we work uh, to continue our ministry and to support our staff during this challenging time. Thank you, and God bless you. Stay safe.
Good morning and happy Easter everyone. It's so good to be with you. This is the time during our service when we normally do our pastoral prayer time and so I come to you today with a prayer litany that um, that we'll share together. There'll be an opportunity um, for each of you to join me in saying Lord hear our prayer at various times throughout the service. I invite you to say that aloud uh, wherever you are or in the quietness of your own heart. There'll also be a time near the end of the prayer where you'll be able to um, to share the prayer concerns that are on your own hearts um, and you might want to see them start now. You might want to type those into the comments on Facebook. Um, you might want to send us an email so that we can include them in our regular uh, weekly emails that go out. So let's take a few deep breaths now to center ourselves as we go to God in prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, we pray this day for Christians throughout the world who are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus on this Easter morning. We pray that we may know each and every one of us, that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, from your love, O oh God. We pray to you, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of nations and cities and governments around the world, that each one of them may be wise in their administration of government during this pandemic. We pray that they might selflessly serve the common good. We pray this to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our bishops, for our pastors, for all the leaders of our congregations, that they may faithfully tend the family of God during this season of social distancing. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For doctors and nurses and all the health care workers who tend the sick and the dying, we pray that they fulfill their vocation safely, without fear of personal danger, and that when they get ill, that they also might be returned to wholeness. O oh Lord, Lord, Hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick. We especially pray for those who are alone in this time. We pray for those who need to be quarantined from their loved ones, that they may find comfort and care in their time of need. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the earth that you have given to our care, for all the creatures who share it with us. We pray that you might be glorified in all your works, O God. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the concerns of our congregation, for our friends, for our family, for prayers spoken and written and shared in our hearts this day. We pray especially for those who have lost loved ones in recent weeks. We grieve with them, we mourn with them, and we know that there are empty places at the table this day. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. And loving God, we, your children, never pray alone. But we pray with all the saints in glory, all the saints around the world, past and present. We come to you with those words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Happy Easter, everyone. To God be the glory. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for worship this Easter Sunday morning. We're so blessed uh, to be able to spend this time with you, and uh, we consider it a great privilege. As you go forth from this place, 
as you go forth into the world beyond, pronounce hope in the name of Jesus Christ. Share the hope that you found in the very nature and the very character of God, who is all about resurrection, who is all about new life. Share that hope, even if you have to do it through a mask. May God bless you. May God keep you safe. May you go forth in the knowledge and love of God and of Jesus, God's only Son. Go forth to be led by the Holy Spirit so that you might know how God is calling you to do the work of ministry in the world. God loves you. We love you. Be safe. Take care of each other. And have a great week. We'll see you again next Sunday. Don't go away quite yet, though. Uh, we want to just share with you one more thing to say Happy Easter. And so uh, Mike Polhemus, who does a lot, a lot of work to make sure that every Sunday we have a worship service that we're sharing with you, finally got in front of the camera himself. And I think that you're going to find this to be just a wonderful little closing to your Easter Sunday worship. So let's take a look.